Welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna to unbox one of our new products, our brand new PWM controller. So this controller is pretty cool because one, it's made in the USA and it really stands apart from some others in the market because it can handle a lot of current. It can handle 100 amps continuous, 200 amps inrush, and it works with various types of sensors. So it can work with a, a temperature sensor, a map sensor, a pressure sensor to control fuel pumps, fans, all sorts of DC brushed motors. This product is perfect for OEM applications. You can save your configurations, flash it, program it, install it, and you're done. Or for aftermarket installations, it's fully configurable for each custom installation. Make sure you stick around to the end of the video. I'm gonna go step-by-step -step through our software and show you how to configure the PWM controller. So now, let's get to the technical details. So our controller is capable of handling about 200 amps inrush and about 100 amps continuous. This is great if you're looking to control high current brush motors with a single controller. It has an additional auxiliary output for a second motor. It's great for secondary fuel pumps and dual fan setups. The unit's designed to be installed under the hood. The controller is rated IP67 and sealed in a sleek one-piece filled aluminum case. The case features an onboard external LED status light, so you can easily identify visually what the controller is doing. This product features a variety of add-on options, including VDO and GM temp sensors, RS-485 to USB programming, as well as a secondary relay harness. If you're not feeling up to programming your own controller, be sure to head over to our pre-programmed product options and we'll program it for you before we ship it. If you want to know the best part about this product, we've been taking strides to manufacture everything in America. So this product is made for sure definitively in Des Moines, Iowa at our facility. We designed it, we CNC make the case, we actually build our own circuit boards, populate the boards, test it, and wrote our own graphic interface software. Went through some of the details, let's open the box and show you what's inside. So now that Bob has finished up with the overview, I'm gonna go ahead and jump into our uh, unboxing and show you what comes in our kit. So depending on if you order one of our pre-programmed units or one of our standalone units, is really gonna dictate what comes in the box. So um, for this unboxing, we're gonna show you what comes in just the standalone unit, and then we'll get into our add-on features towards the end of the unboxing. So let's go ahead and dive in and show you what comes in the unit. So right out of the gate, we get our hardware baggie. This is gonna include basically the hardware for the unit itself to get it started. A quick start guide. This is a great reference for starting the uh, PWM up. Uh, it has the pinouts for the 12 pin Deutsch and a few other uh, kind of quick hints uh, to get started. And then lastly, we have your unit and bubble wrap. Pretty nice little bubble wrap. So we'll go ahead and take this out. The unit is machined from 6061 billet aluminum. Uh, we machined that in-house, which is really cool. We ended up making everything for this unit except for the Deutsch connector all in-house. So that's something that we're very proud of to be able to bring that production all in the United States. So uh, a little bit about this unit. Uh, over here we have our non-conductive cover. This is going to cover up your inputs and outputs for your battery. So underneath here you have your plus and minus for both your battery and your motor. Additionally, the uh, unit has a LED uh, status light. So this is perfect for troubleshooting and just uh, monitoring your uh, motor control. So uh, what's nice about this is it uh, basically shows you the status of the PWM controller and its output. So as the motor increases in speed, the uh, LED is going to increase in uh, speed as well by flashing. So it's a great reference to be able to tell if the motor is actually running or at least the controller is running and then you'll be able to go from there uh, as far as uh, figuring out uh, if you have any issues. So the, uh, the case itself is IP66 rated and sealed on the back side uh, and then has the 12 pin Deutsch here. So that's basically the cover um, and the unit itself. So let's go ahead and hop into the hardware and uh, check out what comes in the bag. So right out of the gate, the hardware kit is going to include nearly everything that you're gonna need to uh, start the PWM up and get uh, your motor uh, running. So included in the hardware kit is gonna be the 12 pin mating connector. Uh, this includes a two pin connector, which we use to uh, use with our RS-45 to USB cable. So you'll simply plug the, the cable in and then plug the cable into the uh, PC to be able to change any software or configure out the uh, entire controller itself. Additionally, the uh, hardware kit includes a fuse holder and 30 amp fuse. So depending on your application, you're gonna wanna put this uh, probably around 18 inches uh, or closer to the battery. 
And then lastly, we have our uh, two CWI Performance stickers. Those are uh, sure to add an additional horsepower to your car, so make sure to put those on. And then we have our uh, Deutsch pins and blinking pins. So you'll use these to uh, go ahead and wire this out. And again, the uh, pinouts are located in the quick guide here. So uh, you'll reference that. This basically shows everything that's gonna come in the standalone unit. And again, as I said, uh, depending on what options you uh, are going with, whether it's one of our pre-configured or standalone units, we have a variety of different sensor options and additional relay harnesses and, and stuff like that. So we're gonna go ahead and get into those and kind of talk about the different options that are available to you. So this controller really stands out from those others in the industry with its flexibility and motor controls. So whether you're wanting to control fans or fuel pumps or any other type of DC motor, um, this controller can really handle that. So with that said, we have a couple different options as far as uh, add-on features that you can uh, select on our website. Um, so we're gonna kind of go through those now. So uh, the first thing that we're gonna show you is our RS45 to USB cable. Um, so this is basically used to connect to the PC and to our software. So you will basically plug this into the two pin that I showed you previously, uh, and then this will just go straight to USB into the, uh, the computer itself. So one thing to keep in mind is when you go into the, uh, the PC with this, you're going to have to go into your device manager and then find what COM port that the uh, USB is running on before you can uh, actually use the software. So uh, in the software explanation that Bob's going to follow this up with, he'll kind of show you how that works and get into that. So we'll set that aside and kind of talk about fans. So. The PWM controller, uh, as I said, can control a single fan or dual fan setup. So if you are planning on running a dual fan setup, you're most likely going to need a fan relay harness. So we do include that. Um, this has our relay and also another fuse holder and everything you're gonna need to wire up that secondary fan. So basically the first fan is gonna be the one that uh, runs primarily off the PWM signal, and then the secondary fan will kick on when the, uh, the motor itself reaches 100% speed. It really allows you to uh, have a lot better fan health and kind of proactively get the uh, residual heat out of the engine bay. So um, with that, um, depending on how you want to control those fans, whether it's controlled via the ECU or just a sensor, we have a couple different sensor options. So these include a VDO sensor. Um, this is the uh, eighth inch MPT. And then we also offer the uh, metric and standard GM style. So if you need the uh, one for the LS or just kind of a standard 350 small block, something like that, uh, we have those sensors as well. So again, this controller is pretty powerful. So depending on if you wanted to control just fans or fuel pumps, uh, this can really do it. So when we designed this, we really wanted to create something that um, nearly any configuration would be usable as far as sensor options. So as we continue to develop this product and the hardware and the software, more and more sensor options are gonna be included in, in the uh, add-ons. So uh, if you're looking to use like a zero to five volt sensor or Rife sensor from like Motion Raceworks, uh, most likely by the time this video comes out, uh, those options are going to be add-on options to the product. So um, that basically wraps up the, uh, the unboxing as far as the unit and all the hardware and options. So let's uh, throw it over back to Bob and uh, he's going to finish up the video with our software overview and show you how you can uh, configure this unit to uh, your liking, so. Okay, so I'm gonna run you through our PWM configurator. So there's some pretty basic sections to this thing. There's a configuration for the inputs, the file, ports, outputs, and testing. So let's just go through each one. So the first thing we wanna do is to check to make sure our USB is plugged into a port that works on our computer. So let's just say we don't know what port the USB is. Let's go to our computer and go to device manager and then you can see ports and you say, oh, this one USB is COM5. Pretty easy. We'll go over to COM5. We'll select that as our, our port for our USB. And then we'll click open. So it opened up and 
It's got firmware 3.07. If you just want to double check the firmware, you can click get. And what that does is it sends a signal down to our, our device via RS-485 and it gets the latest stuff. The next thing in configuration is you can open a file. Let's say you already have a file. Um, you're you're doing, doing a bunch of these installs of the same thing over and over in a vehicle. You can open it up and then add that file and it'll just bring all the settings in or you can save this file as a default for that vehicle or a future install. Next thing you wanna do is get all. When I hit get all, what it does is it talks to our control module and then it populates everything that's inside. So that's kind of how all that works. And then set all would set everything, just to be a double check of all this, it would set it all. So in this configuration, when you do the get all, this is everything that's inside the unit. When you change this, it will change the unit, but RS-45 sometimes is a little bit slow. So if you hit the set all button, it will configure it. And then you can go over to these verify buttons and verify that it actually changed inside the unit. So it'll, it'll communicate down to it and then back to it to verify these things. So let's just talk about the input configurations. There's some inputs that you can configure you can have an ignition input. This would be like to enable the unit when the key's on or off. Um, that's kind of important, especially in a, a car. In an industrial application, maybe you don't want an ignition input. So you can either enable or disable it. So let's just enable it for fun. We gotta click on it. And then we wanna verify that it's sent down to it. And yes, it is enabled now. So then we wanna pick a sensor that we wanna use. What's the input gonna be? So we could use sensors, we could use PWM, or we could use CAN bus. The CAN feature is not an option right now. We're doing uh, CAN open in J1939 architecture for this unit, but we do have a setup for PWM to work with uh, aftermarket ECUs or factory ECUs. And we do have a setup for a couple GM type sensors and a VDO sensor that we have. So I picked analog sensor, and then we wanna go in to um, select what the sensor's gonna be. So here we have three choices. The two GM sensors, this one is the NPT one, this is the metric one, and this is our eighth NPT um, CWI sensor. So and we can just verify that these are programmed into the unit pretty easy to do this. Um, there's an override switch here. Um, and what that does is it, it turns everything on at 100% and you can select the polarity of that. It can either be ground or 12 volts. So we'll just leave it at 12 volts and then we'll verify that it's 12 volts. The next um, section of this is really the output configuration. So we have motor start run time, motor start, when the motor's gonna start and what speed, and then the motor 100% speed, and then a PWM output frequency. So what the motor start time is, is when I design this parameters for this, we like to turn that motor on 100% just for a little bit. Um, and what that does, it really kind of current checks things. Is if there's a bunch of debris, like in a fan, for example, and you wanna PWM this thing at, at a really low rate, let's say like 10%, it'll just, the motor won't move and the motor will get hot. And I've seen thermal events happen where the motors start to melt or catch on fire. So, you know, let's just turn that on for half a second. And for safety on the fans, we have the motor start at 50%. So then we just pick the temperature that we want the fan to come on at 50% cycle. Why would we want to turn on at 50% cycle? Well, let's just say your car has a high ambient heat. Um, load under the hood like a bunch of turbochargers pipes and things like that so we know the motor's not to operating temperature but what we're going to do is turn the fan on basically low let's say at 150 degrees to start that cooling effect happen and get rid of that radiant heat off the engine and that radiant heat also is what makes passengers uncomfortable in cars because the floorboards start to get hot everything gets heat soaked under the hood and then the motor 100 percent speed this should pretty much match what's going on right about the thermostat temperature of the engine. So let's just say this engine's got a 195 degree thermostat. We'll just pick this. So when the engine gets to 195, the fan's gonna be on at 100%. Um, and then we wanna keep that radiator cool, let the engine thermostat cycle the coolant through the engine. And that's the best way to cool the thing. 
So kind of the last thing on the output configurator is the PWM output frequency. What this is, is it's really the frequency that the PWM outputs to the motor. Um, anything below about 12,000 hertz on DC brush motor, sometimes you can pick up some noise, whether it be electrical noise or audible noise from the brushes, they kind of squeal a little bit. Um, so most like a fan or stuff, I would go like 14,000 Hertz, 14 K, but there are some motors that'll want a little bit lower switching frequency. So you want to check with whose products that you're uh, interfacing with. So if you're working with like Spall or GC or like a Meridine or Hayden fans, like 14 kilohertz would be a good option. And then we'll just click verify on that. So it's at 14,000 Hertz. Now the next section is kind of cool because we can test to make sure this thing works. So this is a testing section. Now just note that if you're going to use this testing section, you're not ho hooking the ignition up on your testing. Just click uh, disabled up here. And then we'll just verify that the ignition's disabled because the testing will not test unless the ignition is on. So we just disabled it for testing. So this would be like for your second fan, fuel pump, whatever it is. Because um, the second output on this comes on when the uh, system goes to 100%. So we can just click it on. It's going to turn it on, click it off, it'll off. Um, here, the motor speed. We unhook the sensor to it. We can actually take and then scroll up the speed of the motor. So it'll you'll see it come on. There's an LED on the unit. The LED will come on and then you'll see it, see it go through its stages. So you can ramp the motor up and down. Or if you have it here, it'll just use the sensor. So that's kind of a rundown on the GUI and how it works. We'll probably make some additional changes, add some more sensors to it. It'll be an ongoing deal. Feel free, any questions, uh, make a comment below. Uh, email us, call us, whatever is convenient for you. And uh, happy uh, installation of this product. And thank you a lot for your time watching the video.